So the best case scenario, he engrafts, he has the cells, he does not have a, a life-threatening complications, or he has them and we are able to get him through it, and he will leave the hospital in about you know five weeks or six weeks, then he comes to my clinic every day or every other day. We took, take care of many, many, many things. He comes, he leaves with three full sheets of medications, right? You know, and we peel them off as he gets stronger and healthier. And then we, uh, around day 100, you know, the three months after transplant point, that'd be the first time that I would consider sending him back to Canada. And then he sees me at six months after transplant and then every year until I retire. In the best case scenario, which is not given to everyone, the change is uh, profound. The change is everything. These kids go from being um, closed in their apartment, uh, not able to be in school, not able to do very much, having half a day of each day consumed by bandages and uh, you know antibiotics and infusions and all that stuff, pain medications. And they go, not immediately, it's about a year, two years after, they go to someone who sort of remembers that they had EB because they still have several you know, scars or they may not walk you know, perfectly well or they may have a small lesion somewhere. But for all practical purposes, they, the center of gravity of their lives has moved from I am EB to I had EB, but I am someone who's gonna go to school, who's gonna be an engineer, who's gonna you know, write a novel, you know, who can play with friends, you know, who can you know, play a musical instrument. I have a kid his age that plays a trumpet, swims in the ocean, you know, does archery, for God's sakes, archery. You know, this is just like... But, but is, is that best case scenario possible for someone like Jonathan whose EB is so advanced already? It is. 